webinar, a new release, solve your IT performance issues with big data analytics. Next slide, please. The, this webinar is uh, brought to you by HP Software. Next slide. And my name is uh, Akshar Dev. I am the principal at uh, SoftNet Solutions, Big Data Practice. I'll be hosting and moderating today's webinar. Actually, I'm also one of the Big Data Special Interest Group leaders. And at Software Solutions, we provide uh, strategic management and implementation consulting in big data technologies like Hadoop, Vertica, and data science. Next slide, please. Our presenter today is going to be Alina Jico, product line manager for HP Analytics Center under the HP Software Division. Over 15 years of uh, experience in product management focusing on enterprise scale performance and availability for IT operations. Alina is responsible for all product strategy and roadmap direction for HP's big data analytics solution for IT operations. Her area of expertise is in the application of big data analysis, machine learning, predictive analytics for root cause identification and problem prevention in cloud and hybrid environments. Prior to HP Software, Alina led BMC Software's enterprise systems monitoring suite of products, BMC TrueSight Operations Management, which was an industry-leading analytics-driven performance management and diagnostic solution, so very knowledgeable speaker. Next slide. I would like to cover some housekeeping items. Uh, so today's uh, live session is intended for all Vivid members. The recording will be posted in the webinar section on the Vivid website, um, visible for all members, of course. And additionally, today's slide deck and recording will be made available to you um, after the webinar. We will send you the link via email once they are posted to the Vivid website. And if you have questions as we go along, please type and send them in using the questions panel in the webinar control panel on, on your right. Um, next slide, please. This is just a quick um, slide to, to uh, show you where that questions uh, panel is. And uh, to submit a question, make sure you just you, you expand the question pane and type in your question and click send. And, and we'll uh, start to see those questions. Next slide, please. Again, so the, the, the webinar is um, solve IT performance issues with big data analytics, right? And, and with uh, the product, which is HP operations analytics. And Alina is going to be covering um, the, the content here. Just to, to get a sense of uh, the, the audience and, and the attendees we have today, we wanted to start off uh, with this question. Um, that, that you see um, that how often does your team deal with impactful outages or performance degradation where the cause is not obvious, right? So, so is it happening every day? Does it happen once a week or once a month? Or is it very rare like once a quarter? Or it's like a perfect situation where you never see this kind of issue and, and you have sort of all the uh, bells and whistles in, in place to, to you know, identify and, and take care of the situation. So if you can sort of give us a feedback of uh, as far as this question, uh, how often do you see it? And I think this is going to help uh, us get a get a good sense of, you know, like from, from, a, uh, from a maturity perspective of, of different uh, size and, and different kinds of companies uh, based, based on attendees, uh, how often do they see it? Um, 
I mean, we hopefully don't want to be uh, uh, every day, not every day, right? Um, or or it's going to be rare that uh, you never see that. So, so hopefully it will be one of the other three options. So let's see. Um, so um, so I have the answers. Uh, the, the polling results uh, shows that 9% of attendees um, see this um, kind of issue, um, outages of performance degradation, 9% of time. Once a week is 12%. Once a month is 40%. Once a quarter is 26%, and there are folks who never see this, uh, which is great too, like 14%. So um, let's get started. Um, uh, Alina, uh, I'll hand over to you uh, to, to go through the slide deck. Yeah, thank you very much, Akshar. Uh, definitely very interesting results. And um, welcome, everybody, to our webinar. Um, I have a pleasure today of walking you through um, our operations analytics product offering and um, hopefully we're going to have a good discussion uh, where you'll also get to see a demo of the product and please feel free to type um, all your questions in the, um, in the Q&A window and we'll try to take as much as we can in the remaining slide as, uh, for time after the presentation live and the rest we'll put together in a document and make them available. Um, as, uh, uh, as you guys will be uh, accessing the presentation online. So um, now that the first question put us in the right frame of mind to talk about the evolution of big data analytics, let's look at how we have started, how the enterprise systems management evolved to the point that now we are requiring big data analytics to um, manage our environment and to be um, ahead of the curve. Um, if you look at the evolution of our discipline um, and look back 15, 20 years ago, um, think about the times when event triage was the thing of the day, when events were, for the most part, the main mean for us to know whether our um, infrastructure is up and running. And um, while it was still a reactive approach, and we, we did deal with the uh, causes that we tried to instrument through rules. That was something that uh, enterprise systems management as a discipline relied on very heavily. You have a known problem, you create a rule, you instrument it, so that next time this problem occurs, you don't have to troubleshoot the known problem from beginning to end, but you apply some sort of automation or known documented processes um, how to resolve it. As we're well becoming more sophisticated, we started leveraging um, statistical correlation much more so that we can look below the threshold and see how the problems are potentially evolving and try to catch them uh, in a more proactive manner um, before they start impacting end users. And at that time, we still dealt with known root causes because as, as we could spot the known root cause based on the evolving, um, uh, evolving trends that are being detected, then we would automatically remediate it. But as our environments were becoming more complex, we found ourselves in the domain of problems that had unknown root causes. And um, in the end, we found um, our customers were telling us um, about the issues, uh, and we would troubleshoot the issues where the root cause is definitely unknown. And what we did realize that even for unknown problems, the ones that we haven't seen before, a lot of the times the data is there. Um, it's just how you get at this data is the question. And that's where the combination of log management, event triage, and statistical correlation came all together. And that's where advanced analytics become um, the need of the day in order to aid IT operations to identify the problems that are caused by previously unknown uh, root causes and then how and enable the IT operations to convert the unknown root causes into known causes that lend themselves to automation and quick troubleshooting. And if you look at the types of problems that you typically experience in your environment, and you look at what does your last outage look like, you most of the time fall into categories. 
either all of your existing monitoring tools are showing that your application or your infrastructure is performing as expected, but your users are calling and complaining about the degraded performance. Or you may have found yourself on the other end of the spectrum where every single monitoring tool for every IT domain that you manage and monitor actually shows some sort of state of red and you pretty much find yourself in the sea of red and in that situation it's very difficult to determine so what is the cause, what is the symptom. So, so either when all the indicators are good or all the indicators are bad, the question is, well, where do I start now? How do I troubleshoot this, uh, this question? Um, and we are saying that you definitely can, and the answers are pretty much at your fingertips, but the answers lie in your data. The question then is, how do you get at this data? when our infrastructures are continuously um, increasing in their complexity and the volume of data that you have to deal with and the uh, formats of the data are continuously evolving and now you have to be able to very quickly look at logs, at your SNMP traps, at your events, alerts, topology, and how do you bring it all, all together and make sense of it. Um, and while numerous silos of um, your monitoring environment have their own specialized tools when you troubleshoot issues that span public and private cloud and hybrid environments and geographically dispersed data centers where your employees bring your, your own their own devices to work and they want them to be automatically managed um, by your IT infrastructure. The complexity is definitely growing and this is um, the situation where um, a solution like operations analytics um, that was developed by HP in very close cooperation with HP Labs uh, comes to the rescue. So what is this operations analytics solution um, and what value does it exactly bring to the table? So first and foremost, it's all about data because while we are talking about analytics and being able to find this answer in the uh, the, as a needle, needle in the haystack of huge volumes of data, the bottom line is you need to be able to bring in data. And what we're offering to our customers is we will bring all your data, whether it is um, from HP monitoring solutions or from third-party monitoring solutions, we say that we can analyze all the data that exists in your environment. In fact, the more data you give us, the happier we are because the more precise our root cause analysis is going to be. And uh, we, um, uh, being a vendor agnostic solution, we have a number of out-of-the-box integrations that come for HP products. We also have integrations with third-party products, um, whether it is from application domain, mobile, storage, network, system, cloud, etc. We can also bring your IT data um, uh, or and non-IT data and business data in order to understand um, how uh, your IT infrastructure impacts the business. And um, if you already have certain tools that do some base uh, log search and management, such as Splunk, this is great. We will take their logs and their data as well, and we will be you know, like a green IT recycler. We'll give you the insight into this data um, that was previously impossible before. And the data that we can bring comes in multiple formats. We are taking it in the format of metrics, events, or SNMP traps. We will leverage the topologies and, of course, logs. We really like um, the idea of logs and the more logs we can process and analyze, um, the, the more precise uh, results you're going to get as to your um, uh, historical trends, your predictive trends, and your real-time situation. So, all this data, huge volumes of data, how can we possibly store, analyze, and retrieve it in a very efficient way? It is possible because under the hood of our product, we have big data store um, delivered by Vertica. Uh, Vertica has been designed from the ground up to process huge volumes of data, and it allows you to keep all your performance data, all your availability data, all your log data um, in one place. We're, we're very efficient at how to compress, store, and retrieve this data. 
So it becomes pretty much your data storage that allows us to also store it in a very granular manner. And this solution is definitely tried and tested by some of the most data intensive um, applications in the business. For example, Facebook and um, Apple rely on the Vertica uh, big data technology um, themselves. And um, just to alleviate your concerns, I have to let you know that the Vertica database comes built into a product. You don't need to buy it separately. When you get um, operations analytics, you get the connectors to multiple data sources. You get toolkits to bring the data from the sources that may be custom to your environment and not supported out of the box. And of course, you get the big data data store, Vertica. So uh, next, we brought your data. We store it in a very official, efficient way. We can quickly, quickly restore it and uh, visualize it. But what most importantly, uh, what what most important part is, we can very, very quickly analyze it, and we can transform this data into real intelligence. And um, we provide a layer of analytics on top of this data that allows you to do a number of very interesting manipulations to generate absolutely new content from this variety of data types that was not possible for you to generate before. You're able to search this data at very quick speeds. We're providing you a number of guided workflows to help troubleshooting your performance and availability issues. We allow you to apply visual analytics through pre-built dashboard and, and guided user interaction with the product where we try to serve you the next step in how you want to look at the data. And we're offering you something that is very unique in the industry today called automated log analytics where, um, and, and I'll give you more examples of this uh, in the future, in the future slides, but the idea there is how do you know what's important to you right now when you don't know what question to type in your search box? And how do you know what's important for you right now to troubleshoot this particular issue? And um, with all the data that we store in Vertica, um, on one hand, we're able to help you understand all your historical trends that you may or may not realize you've had before. On the other hand, we also allow you to predict what your performance will be in the future and look around that corner. And we also give you uh, ability to understand your real-time status and we provide you with real-time alerting that's rooted very deeply in our analytical capabilities. So as, as an end user, um, what do you get as a result? As a result of leveraging HP <coughs> operations analytics, you will find yourself with fewer outages, a ways to resolve your performance and availability problems faster, and you will see how the number of all hands of on deck scenarios for you will definitely and dramatically go down. You will see how more optimized your resource utilization, your hardware resource, and your human resource utilization, especially especially your subject matter expert uh, utilization, um, <coughs> will be optimized. And you will see overall how your productivity improves, improves success, successfully and drastically. And um, to take you um, a little bit deeper into how operations analytics does what it does, I wanted to walk you through a few examples that help you understand the capability of the product and how they're being applied. So for example, today, if you think about the last outage you had to troubleshoot, where you had to bring um, your subject matter experts from a variety of domains to understand where, where exactly this issue that you cannot seem to catch resides, um, whether it is an intermittent issue or just um, a, an outage uh, that is your existing monitoring tools that troubles identifying. Um, you remember that you probably brought your subject matter experts that came with uh, their log files that they think may be pertaining to uh, the domains where the issue may reside with their metrics, with uh, the latest information about so what has changed. And um, they had to choose from thousands and thousands of terabytes of data um, to choose the data that they 
think may be relevant for this particular troubleshooting exercise. So they may or may not have chosen accurately and correctly. And then manually, they all had to go through all these data sources that they had. And maybe they use regular expression search. Maybe they just look through it um, within their eyes. Maybe they use some sort of log search uh, basic capabilities to come through this uh, terabytes of messages to identify what data and what messages in their environment are actually meaningful to them to find the problem cause at hand. And then after that, they probably reduced it from uh, you know thousands of logs and data points to a few hundred. And then they started looking at the resulting findings. And maybe they identify a few of uh, potential causes that uh, may uh, may be the culprit of the issues they're experiencing. And then maybe they succeeded may in resolving the issue, and there were some lessons learned. So these lessons learned could have been incorporated in some run book, so some, um, some way to pass the collected knowledge on so that you will not have to go through the process again. But in the end, you're never 100% sure whether you completely address the issue, or maybe you have addressed the symptom and the real problem is still out there, and it will come back to haunt you as an intermittent problem or another a problem that's difficult to diagnose, and you'll have to go through this exercise again. So this is where we um, propose to you um, automated log analytics. With automated log analytics, we look at terabytes and terabytes of uh, logs and log messages, and in minutes, we're applying multiple algorithms to these messages. The first algorithm that we applied is called clustering. Uh, because we're continuously learning um, every uh, data point that is brought to us from your monitoring solutions, every uh, message that is recorded in the logs, we're able to determine affinity across multiple data sources. And we're clustering logs in related clusters. And then within each cluster, we're able to um, identify uh, the keywords that are relevant for the problem space and problem time that you're being researching, that you're researching, and also um, the severity of uh, selected keywords and selected messages. And then within that, we start identifying, so what are uh, the components of the logs um, within the clusters that we're finding significantly abnormal? The reason we're able to define what's significantly abnormal is because we are continuously learning what is normal for your environment, for every single piece of data that has been brought in the product. And when we identify that what is normal for you on Tuesday at 12, at 12 p.m. does not seem to be normal anymore, we start correlating all the abnormal activities that are captured in your logs to see what is the affinity, what are the potential trends. And um, as a result of this, um, continuous sifting through abnormal behavior and uh, narrowing down on the areas that are significant, significantly abnormal. Um, we, we're, narrowing, uh, we're, we're able to narrow them down so that uh, um, we propagate to the front uh, and to the user UI the items that are highly correlated to the problem time and help you minimize uh, the number uh, uh, that the the amount of time you spend troubleshooting. And then in addition to that, we allow our customers uh, to um, introduce expert sourcing to inject their domain understanding into, um, the, um, into the troubleshooting process. So next time, it, it will learn um, the domain expert advice, and it will bring it up automatically. Another important part of what we're able to do with our analytics solution is predictive analytics. As I already mentioned, we established the baseline. And we, for every um, uh, attribute that we bring into the system, we'll learn its normal operating behavior for every hour of the day, day of the week, and week of the month. We're also able to factor seasonality in this behavior. And that helps us automatically identify trends um, that uh, are developing throughout your infrastructure. Um, and uh, when we're bringing to our customers our, um, our event management solution operations bridge with operations analytics together for those who are interested to in, in the out-of-the-box integration that we have between our operations bridge and operations analytics. The customers are able to um, 
uh, operate in two domains at the same time, but operations bridge, they're able to leverage their uh, uh, topology-based correlation and rule-based correlation for the problems that have been known. And with operations analytics, they're able to analyze the problems that uh, operations bridge has not been able to identify as a known problem, so it becomes an unknown problem. And we analyze those unknown problems for troubleshoot them, we predict the future performance, and we convert the unknown problem back into known so that next time operations bridge or any other event management solution for that matter would be able to recognize it. So um, if you look at it um, from the day in the lifetime of real-time analytics in action, I would like to walk you very uh, briefly through a use case uh, that has been recorded by our HPIT, uh, who are an avid user of operations analytics, and their environment is really large, uh, one of the biggest IT, uh, IT environments in the world. But before we go through it, um, I, I propose you to answer the survey question. Yes, so, so over the last year, if you, if you, I'm, I'm sure you can see the question as well. So over the last year, on average, in your sort of uh, in your division, what is your MTTR per incident? So mean time to repair per incident. Um, is it less than two hours? Is it um, more than four hours and less than a day? More than two days? You are not sure and you don't track. So if you don't mind. It would be good to get that feedback um, so that we understand, uh, based on this audience, uh, what is your typical MTTR. Yeah. And I think and this, this question in. is interesting <laughs> as well. And, and the interesting thing here is, uh, to note here is, I mean, the, the world is shifting to a more uh, digital um, economy, right? So it's, it's increasingly uh, becoming difficult to maintain the quality of service because the, the environments are becoming more and more complex. So it will be interesting to see the the, the polling results, um, you know, where, where people are. So I have the results. Um, so less than 25 percent. Um, uh, actually, this is about uh, what percentage of time do you find the root cause of your incident? So I think we, we got the um, the question. Um, I think flipped, but less than 25 percent of you are saying that uh, less than 25 percent of the time. Uh, 25 to 50 percent of time is 12 percent, 51 to 75 percent think that it is 17 percent, and greater than 75 is 21 percent, don't know, don't track is 40 percent. So back to you, Alina. Yeah, thank you very much, Akshar. So um, this data is um, fairly in line with what we have been seeing. Um, from um, all the other uh, customers that we're interviewing. But now let's go back to our day in the life of uh, HPIT operations manager. And um, this particular problem HPIT has captured for us um, specifically to share with our customers as they troubleshooted this problem in real life. And um, you know, you all have seen this situation before where something is going wrong and uh, your event management console lights up and uh, even though you do use as much as you can your suppression and your deduplication, etc. techniques, sometimes it's not very easy to determine so what is my causal event for all the problems that I am experiencing. And uh, prior to deploying operations analytics, what HPIT shared with us on average when they do have um, an outage, it used to take them, you know, anywhere close to 36 hours, and for this particular application that they're monitoring with, it, um, a, with operations analytics that is used to process orders, when they had problems with this order processing application, for 36 hours they would probably have about five experts engaged, and while they're troubleshooting the problem, 
in 36 hours, they would accumulate about two weeks of order backlog. When they deployed operations analytics and um, order processing system gave them troubles yet again, the first and foremost uh, thing that they did is they started looking at operations analytics dashboard. And what dashboard very quickly helped them understand, it helped them understand so what metrics are related and what metrics are moving as a trend in common um, in a particular sleeve of time. The dashboard helps them understand the context and what components in their IT operations are actually impacted. And in this case, they can see that the number of transactions dropped, the response time has increased, and they started being able to see that they have some sort of database connectivity issues. And in that case, they applied um, operations analytics, um, log analytics capability. And they weren't exactly sure what to search for. So with um, log analytics, you actually are able to specify the, uh, the domain of technology within which um, you're trying to troubleshoot the problem, and most importantly, problem time. And by uh, looking at the data through log analytics, you can see that they looked at 4.5 million messages that the system automatically identified as relevant to the impact of the problem and to the problem itself that they're trying to troubleshoot. And um, operations analytics um, specifically identified what messages in their logs were new and what messages the, the, in their logs were rare. And the screenshot that they shared with us is the new message uh, that appeared uh, highlighted out of 4.5 million messages was the one that was the closest, um, closest to the problem time. And this was automatically propagated to the forefront of um, the user interaction with the product. And um, once they understand the situation or the damage um, that uh, the situation creates, they're able then to help narrow down the time frame to begin the troubleshooting. And that's how they used operations analytics with the time frame being known. And imagine having to try to go through 4.5 million log messages manually. That would have been impossible. And uh, by double clicking on that new message that they haven't seen before, they uh, were able to automatically uh, be served the drill down to the actual root cause um, messages that was in the log. And in this case, the message logs revealed the cause of the outage to be a database parameter change. Um, with this information, they were able to fix the issue um, in record time. And um, as a result, once they fixed the issue, they were able to report that the similar issue used to take them 36 hours is now 30 minutes, required just one expert who took a look at the existing data uh, that was uh, stored in operations analytics. And while he was uh, troubleshooting the problem, the backlog was no longer two weeks. It was just four and a half, four and a half hours of backlog. So um, in terms of two to two features, what I'm going to do, I probably won't dive into a lot of details because we really want to leave some time for the demo. Um, but I will quickly tell you of what, uh, what is you know, in Operations Analytics 2.2. The 2.2 release was um, released in December. And in that release, um, uh, we, were, we added additional capabilities uh, that allow us leverage our an analytics to generate alerts um, based on the analysis that the system is performing and uh, based on the intelligence that it's continuously delivering. And um, it made perfect sense to us because if our system continuously calculates the performance of your infrastructure and, and is able to give you the, the smarts um, that transform the data that you have into real intelligence, we want to make sure that this intelligence is delivered at the right time uh, and in the right hands so to the right people. And that's what we've accomplished with uh, um, a real-time alerting um, based on analytics. We also um, applied the same type of out-of-the-box log analytics, which is automated analytics to data and to logs that we source from Splunk. Um, and while Splunk has good search, uh, uh, log search capabilities and is able to visualize nicely statistical results um, all of that search with operations analytics, log analytics were taking it to the next level and help them truly understand um, the, the behavior, the abnormal behavior 
of the data that is reflected in the logs and determine the trend and help with much faster troubleshooting of the problems. And um, another uh, important feature that we introduced in this release is integration with uh, HP One View and HP One View manages converged infrastructures, so network storage and virtualization. And now we provided a single click out of the box integration with One View um, that allows us to correlate converged infrastructure layer with application layer. I think at this time, even though I do have a few more slides that uh, describe in depth the features. I will probably switch gears and move into a demo to make sure that we have um, that you we have a chance to show you actually uh, the product in action. So give me a second. I'm going to move uh, the demo into the presentation screen. Are you able to see my uh, demo? Yes, we are. Looks great, Alina. Oh, it just went away. Give me one second. All right, so um, to give you a little bit the setup for the demo, um, as I already mentioned, Operations Analytics is a solution that is used, for tr used to troubleshoot um, complex performance and availability issues and um, understand historical trends of your IT infrastructure environment and predict uh, uh, what your performance may be in the future so that you can um, address it in a timely manner. And as such, this product is primarily used by level two, level three NOC operators, uh, subject matter experts in particular IT domain, um, and uh, application architects who are often called to help troubleshoot uh, a problem. So the background for this demo is that um, a subject matter expert um, responsible for this Advantage Online Banking application. Her name is Sheila, and she is the go-to person when the issue occurs. And of course, she knows her application in and out, and um, she is tasked with resolving any issues that Operations Center does not know how to solve. And it is her job to proactively diagnose uh, the system and try to prevent issues before they affect customers. And um, the issues that Sheila needs to handle can be very complex to diagnose because they may be caused by anything from code bugs to routine changes uh, to uh, intermittent issues that occur in your environment. And the outcome of these issues may be catastrophic for the company. So in this situation, Sheila gets a call from NOC telling her that online banking application is suffering from performance issues. And NOC is unable to diagnose the issue. This is not something they've ever encountered before. So Sheila uses operations analytics to perform root cause analysis. And um, her first step is um, to uh, look at the dashboard. And in this dashboard for her application, she tracks a number of interesting metrics. She um, looks at the um, transaction backend time. She also looks at the mobile uh, service banking topology that the product automatically generates if, if uh, you have, for example, um, um, a, uh, a service model already existing, or you can very quickly build it um, if you are not uh, in the business of using service models. In this particular situation, she is looking at the service topology from the viewpoint of network error rate. She is also looking at uh, the transaction um, application layer performance over time. And transaction response time is one of her KPIs. And just like any NOC, she's also keeping an eye on the weather. And a, uh, operations analytics can bring a lot of different types of non-IT data because it all, always um, often becomes a key performing, performance indicator when you're troubleshooting particular issues. So here she doesn't rule out that maybe a storm may cause certain uh, problems in their environment. And she needs to determine whether, in fact, it's uh, um, it's correlated to anything, and in fact, correlation implies causation. So um, as she looks at uh, her dashboard, her first thought is, OK, well, I see um, uh, I have uh, a number of problems from the transaction backend time. My uh, transaction response time has definitely peaked, and performance has degraded. I can see that this particular part of my application server appears to have um, an issue. 
And what my first question is, when did this issue start? And um, to, uh, to determine that, we're going to use a capability in the product called Time Machine to be able to go back in time and um, understand at what point, what was this inflection point, when did it happen, the performance began to degrade. And um, we're moving our Time Machine, uh, and as you can see, with Time Machine, uh, all the data in the, um, uh, in the display is changing, and that helps us go back in time to identify um, when performance has degraded. And um, right here, you can see that at 8.44 p.m. on May 20th is when um, a number of um, indicators are showing that there was uh, a jump in uh, transaction response time, in transaction backend time. And um, at that time, you can see that all other application components from the network error rate perspective, they, they seem to be really healthy except for this one particular application server. And by looking at the weather, you realize that uh, no, weather has definitely, uh, it has nothing to do with it. Uh, the next uh, question is, so OK, we now, when the problem time has begun, now let's dive deeper in the uh, health of this application and understand what other relevant components may be of interest to us. So um, we, of course, uh, see that it's only this particular application server that has been experiencing issue. And also, the uh, events that we're bringing from OMI, uh, event management solution, and it can be any other event management solution, also indicate to uh, a jump um, in the event count for this uh, mobile banking application for the back end as well. So we um, are able to continuously validate the problem time and we start narrowing down where potential issues um, may be. And the next step is to look at um, log analytics to see what inter interesting and relevant information may be hiding in the logs. And for this particular problem time and this particular technical domain, the system identified 152,000 messages that are relevant to this problem time. And out of them, 20 were flagged as the ones that are uh, deserving attention. They were all automatically ranked and prioritized. Um, and uh, rare and new messages were identified. And as you can see, there is a new message that is really close to the problem cause. So um, looking um, by clicking on this message, we get a pop-up that uh, indicates that the, the area that was flagged by the system is the fact that the server ran out of threads to serve requests with the guidance to consider raising um, threads for um, uh, child settings. So let's assume that Sheila went ahead and she um, modified um, the settings. And um, um, and let's assume that, that she did fix the issue. Then the next step from there is um, if she fixed the issue, we need to be able to go forward in time and come to the present time to see uh, what, once the issue was fixed and a little bit of time passed, whether actually all the other alerts have been cleared from the system. And now we're leveraging, again, our time machine. Now we're coming back from the past into the present. And in fact, um, it does look like um, the system uh, appears to be healthy. And, um, uh, and uh, it looks like the problem has been cleared. Well, Sheila suspects that these issues happened in the past as well. And she decides to check whether what she has done actually fixed an issue um, or the issue will reoccur, because that will tell her whether she fixed the real cause of the problem or she just uh, fixed a particular symptom. So what she's going to do, she's going to look at, uh, into the future to see what will the system be performing like in two weeks. And she selects the, um, the, the two weeks uh, window, and she can see the projected performance. Um, she can see that uh, the increase in seasonality trend is there, and it's indicating that the issue will reoccur. So while she thinks she fixed it, and that she has, and it gives her an idea that she needs to dig deeper, um, and um, th otherwise there will be wider problems that are developing. And um, she decides to use um, operations analytics alerting capabilities. Um, to uh, to be notified if this issue begins to develop in the future again. And um, for that, 
<coughs> she finds the repeated log message um, that indicates that the server ran out of thread and decides to configure an alert for this type of message entry. And um, with, uh, with this alert, um, she um, configures this. Um, uh, she, she's, she's done her search and she identified this uh, server run out of thread message and uh, she starts um, going through the alert um, configuration process which is uh, really straightforward because it, it is automatically generated query that is being saved for her uh, benefit and now she's able to specify that this is in fact a high priority um, alert and uh, that um, that she wants to specify that if uh, it's uh, occurs more than two times in the span of 30 minutes, she wants to receive an alert and she wants an, ima an email to be sent if this is detected, but she has other options. She can run a script which can be a remediation script or can, she, can, she can send an SNMP draft. In this case, she will, run, or she will um, have an email generated uh, and, um, in, and in this email she will receive the notification that, um, that the system is beginning to degrade. So um, once the alert is triggered, she'll receive this email and um, she will know um, what she needs to do next. And um, in the end, uh, using operations analytics, subject matter expert is able to find and fix issue and um, they're able to predict the issue of recurrence and they're able to go back into the system and dig deeper to troubleshoot the issue and they can also set up alerts to make sure that um, they're not caught off guard when the issue is likely to recur. So this is um, a quick demo of um, operations analytics and um, from here um, I think we're going to we're going to jump back into the presentation and I'm just going to quickly go through the slides and, and move into um, a summary of um, what we have seen here and in summary you can see that operations analytics brings a number of really valuable capabilities to the table. You are able to analyze millions of logs uh, messages and, and logs and performance metrics in a matter of seconds and it will be automatically served to you to help identify the root cause of the problem. And you can use operations analytics to pinpoint cause of the problem, whether it's a major outage or those pesky kind of problems that are intermittent, they come impact your SLAs and they leave without a trace. Um, and uh, um, it will also allow you to have uh, visibility across multiple domains from the analytical perspective to see how components from a variety of domains contribute to the overall problems that are developing in your environment. We're able to help you understand your past performance, project what the performance may be in the future so that you can impact it and control your future better with this predictive and preemptive in insight, which um, in return will help you avoid outages and lower your total cost of ownership. And now let's move into the next polling slide and polling question. Thank you. So with this uh, polling question, uh, it was the one that I had uh, mentioned before, which is, uh, so over the last year, on average, what is your MTTR per incident, right? So we would want to get um, some sort of understanding of how much um, time you are spending and what is a typical MTTR um, in your environment. So the options are less than two hours. Uh, is it greater than four hours, uh, less than one day? Uh, there's a second option, greater than two days. Um, and then if you don't know or, or don't track uh, are the other options. So, um, because I, I think it's important, uh, this, this will uh, willing to solve similar issues have been doing, right? Is it really um, speeding up your process to find the root cause, right? Uh, like like Alina was uh, showing you, um, or or is it uh, just making you 
work hard and and uh, you know do a lot of searches and do a lot of, uh, lot of analysis of your data in order to figure out where the the problem is. So I think um, that'll be good uh, to see where people are at. Uh, so so the polling results show that um, nine percent of them less than two hours, um, thirty two percent uh, greater than four hours and less than one day. Uh, greater than two days, 12 percent, don't know 18 percent, and don't track 29 percent. So um, I think uh, this, this hopefully gives uh, you, Alina, a little bit of uh, idea of where, where the audience is. Yeah, I, I think the breakdown um, of the answers is, again, pretty much in line with what we see in the industry. and. Um, you know, all we think about, we're trying to sort of allocate the dollar amount um, that constitutes the cost of downtime for all of us to participate in problem troubleshooting versus, um, you know, versus the opportunity cost of leveraging something like operations and solution to get you to this root cause faster. So um, I think. Uh, this is a good time for us. We have a little bit of time left to take any questions from the audience. Okay, great. Um, so, Lena, I, I see a lot of questions uh, in here. Um, the first question is, how much does it cost to add a log analytics and predictive analytics to OPSA? Um, well, typically, um, we, our pricing is based on the number of managed nodes in your environment. Um, and I think it's a very important point to stress because um, we don't want to count how much data you analyze. Um, unlike a number of other vendors in the industry, we believe is that we need you to have as much data in the system to make analysis much more precise and stronger. And therefore, um, what all we want to do is identify the, the operating system, whether it is further physical or virtual, or identify a device from which you want us to bring the data in, and you're done, and we'll be bringing the data from that. So from that perspective, our licensing model is really straightforward. And um, in terms of particular pricing, um, we would have to understand um, how large is your environment, because uh, again, the larger your environment, uh, the uh, the better it's going to, going to be for you from the total cost of ownership and the economy of scale in terms of um, using um, operations analytics. And another important point that I would like to stress is the predictability of our licensing and pricing model. Because no matter how much your data grow, grows, since you know how many uh, devices, operating systems, or virtual, um, physical or virtual, you have in your environment, you'll always be a, you will never be caught off guard, off guard uh, with um, uh, monitoring more and managing more that you paid for, you'll always have much better predictability into how you want to allocate resources to uh, perform an analytics on your data. Got Next it. Next question. So, yeah, what exactly uh, would you say is the licensing structure? So what do you measure to charge for the product? Yeah, we measure, um, we measure the number of operating systems, whether it's physical or virtual. And uh, in terms of um, the actual price, we'll be happy to put you in touch with our um, account managers um, who will look at your particular situation. And based um, on the number of nodes you have, they'll be able to provide you with the right price. Got it. And uh, does OPSA only work with HP products? Oh, no. That's one of the beauty of operations analytics. We're event agnostic. We will bring data from any product that has log, data, events, um, or if it's non-IT data, such as dollars sold per minute, the amount of your shopping cart, number of users logging in, you name it. So we're vendor agnostic product, um, and we operate with both HP product and any other monitoring product out there. Consider us your analytical layer. OK, great. Thank you. Are you able to integrate? Um, with the IBM mainframe data um, and bring that into HP Analytics? Yeah, we're able to integrate with any data source. OK, great. So so that applies to any mainframe, not just IBM, right? Yeah, 
Yeah. Okay. Um, and it, it, I know you covered this, but if you don't mind uh, again sharing, uh, what is the backend database is another question. So if you don't mind sharing how this is architected. Absolutely. So the backend database is Vertica. This is a quote unquote big data database. It comes built into the product. So for the most part, it's transparent to the end user, but it is there um, to process huge volumes of data that uh, modern enterprises are beginning to accumulate. Got it. Great. Thank you. Um, and also, uh, if you can touch base on what are the typical install and setup timelines uh, for a mid-size uh, company that you have seen based on your experience? Sure. So we have two types of uh, deployment options. One is called all-in-one, and this is a virtual appliance. And uh, basically, it's all already pre-configured for you. It's just a matter of um, dropping it uh, onto uh, the right hardware and the right VM. And uh, depending on the sizing of your environment, it, it will work well with small to medium size enterprises. And the second type of deployment model is distributed where um, the major component of the product um, will be deployed separately. And the point of that is that this type of distributed deployment allows us to scale the system vertically and horizontally independently of each major component. So for example, if you're planning to, uh, to have more logs used um, in your environment, will allow you to just to scale this part and allocate more resources to that. Um, if you're planning to have more data or you're planning to have very, a uh, very large data store will allow you to um, scale just that environment, uh, that, that part of your environment. So the distributed deployment is um, typically a medium to large size organization uh, and uh, the all-in-one or virtual appliance multi-medium organizations and to further hone down this requirement. Uh, you would have to talk to our pre-sales specialist who will help you size your environment appropriately and provide, propose the required configuration. Okay, great. So I think um, uh, th those are the main questions. We we might have a few more, but I guess uh, we are close uh, to, to our end time. So uh, maybe uh, we can get that uh, to you, Alina, and, and you can reach out to them and provide them uh, some clarity um, on, on the questions that, that they have been asking. Yeah, we're planning to aggregate uh, the questions into FAQ document and make it available together with the uh, presentation replay. All right, sounds great. Uh, so if you don't mind uh, going to the next slide. All right, we already covered questions, so uh, thank you. For attending today's webinar, uh, please be sure to complete the short survey after the webinar um, ends and opt in to receive more information from HP. Uh, you see a URL also here uh, where you can get uh, more details um, and, and just a reminder that the webinar recording and the slide deck will be posted uh, to the Vivid website and in the next few days you will receive an email with those links. And um, next slide. Yeah, and, and there are survey questions as well. Um, please uh, rank the following question uh, on, on a scale from 1 to 5, 5 being the highest. And uh, that's about it. Um, thanks thanks uh, a lot, Alina. Thank you very much, Akshar, as well. All right, that, that ends our webinar. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining.